Oh man, here we go. We're back, man. Y'all asked for it. Y'all got it. TQ is back on Say Cheese TV, man. How you doing? What up, Say Cheese? I'm doing man, all right, what's... man. I'm doing all right. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people, they wanted you back. Um, a lot has happened since our last interview. Our last interview did did amazing. Half a million views. Um, you know, a lot of people are are entertained. Some people are tired and they want you and Boosie to sit down and, and you know, because now it's, it's becoming a family feud, it seems like. Uh, yeah. Um, like you said, a lot has transpired since uh, the interview. Um, some things surprising, some things not so much. Um, shit, I'm tired just like they are. It, and I would say this, it has become... Since that interview, I have learned a lot about how my brother kind of, like, where his head at, and it's a lot of personal shit. Like, this shit started off as some, some business went bad, but I'm realizing that uh, it's definitely some uh, family feud, personal, childhood, mm. deep shit that I ain't even realized, bro. To be honest with you, I ain't even realize uh, a lot of the personal issues Boosie had has with me. And um, to be honest with you, man, it's almost like I learn something new every week. Mm. And shit, the shit, the shit is a little bit tiring because um, when when you think about legacy, I feel like it's affecting his legacy for sure. Um, and legacy is important to me. You know? Yeah, he he said that uh, you've always your mom always took your side from a kid. Man, that shit so that's so crazy, bro. Cause you were the firstborn. <laughs> Man, that shit so crazy. And I see I see like people like like amen and that shit, and I'm just like y'all are deflecting whatever y'all went through as a kid. Because let me tell you something: if you grew up with if you from Baton Rouge. If you grew up with us, like even the people in my family, like I was not the favorite kid. And even if I was, bro, we like, bro, all these years later, like you really still, you really still talking about that and you, you, you're applying that to some shit that you're doing. But I would say this, I definitely was not the favorite. Boosie's name is again. He's a Boosie was always getting in trouble, and if you ask anybody who's from Baton Rouge that grew up with us, went to high school with him, Boosie was like more of a spoiled kid. He was more of a spoiled kid. Like, so when I hear him like say that shit, I'm like, man, that shit really. That's the only time I I hadn't posted about what's going on with us in a minute. So that's, I posted about it cause I'm just like, man, for you to paint that picture of my mother as like she did you something or was negative to you in any type of way, I can't respect it. That ain't solid. And that shit just not real. That shit is just not real. But the way he talking about it, man, the way he posts about it, the way he so, you know, passionate and vic seem like he victimized about it i'm realizing that um it makes sense why it seemed like he sabotaged everything i've ever brought to the table because i'm not knowing that my brother is like feel this way about me the whole time like i'm managing him the whole time i'm i'm trying to i'm doing what's best for for him what's best for the family business. I'm thinking we, you know, I'm thinking we doing this shit together. But the what, the shit that he posted now, I'm kind of realizing that this is why he sabotaged every deal I brought in, every business partner I brought in, he cut them out or just straight up disrespected them or just cut me out of a deal or just went in there and flipped the table over basically and fucked up every deal because Shit, he's been in competition with me for no reason this whole time, bro. He's been sabotaging everything. 
because he feels some type of way about some shit from when we was kids, bro. I mean, how how bad is it? I mean, it's the holiday season. It's Thanksgiving. It's about to be Christmas. Is family, I mean, are y'all not talking at all? Man, we're not talking at all. I, I said this on the first interview. Me and Boosie have not had a two-way conversation. A two-way conversation in almost two years. Might, might even be more than that now. With the only conversation we've had has been him calling, screaming, telling him, telling me what what he gonna do and shit like that. And it just ain't been, you know, it just ain't ain't nobody going for that. First of all, second of all, it ain't never, never even been no conversation about the shit that he claimed. I did or claim me and Blue did that, and that's the problem. So when you talk about conversation, having a conversation for the holidays, man, we ain't even had a conversation about the shit that he claimed. Like, I never even got the call. Like, bruh, what you know? Did you did did you do this? Why did you do this? It ain't never been that. It was a you did this, and I'm just like. Bruh, you forged my name? I'm like, bruh, if you if you try to do that shit, like, if you try to say that, bro, you're going to lose in court, and you you that's going to be some whole shit. That's going to be some whole shit, bruh. It's going to look bad, bruh, because you know that ain't the case. Don't go with that, bruh. Don't try that shit. Like, let's let's get let's get on the call and let's figure out. Tell us what 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 amount of money you want. So, man, it ain't been no it ain't been no quality conversations between Boosie and myself in a long time. And I'm going to tell you this, it's because he blocked me. He blocked me. Like, I don't even, I ain't, I don't even think I've ever been blocked before. It took the longest for me to realize that, you know what I'm saying? When you text somebody and, and it's been going green all that time, that you're blocked. I don't think nobody's ever blocked me. And I just can't, all that shit just, I can't respect it, bro. How this shit yeah. has transpired, I can't respect nothing that's going on. Well, I mean, I guess your mom is asking him to not uh to not sue you. Man, from what I understand, at some point, maybe like six months ago now, my mom tried to put us on a three way call. And that to my knowledge, is the extent of us. It's been, it's been that. Why y'all, why y'all can't talk this out? Why, why are you suing your brother without even having a conversation? Like, that's what it's been. It ain't been, my, my mom ain't been gun ho uh, TQ in my defense. It's been a why are you handling it like this? Why you don't want to talk? Why you can't tell him what what you feel like he did wrong? Why y'all? Why you won't listen to him? And, and why you won't listen to TQ? And and so he could tell you what his plan was. Like my mom ain't been gun ho in my defense at all. My mom has stayed out of it as much as she could. The one thing my mom did was try to put us on a three way call, and that went horrible. Yeah, I mean, since our interview, well, I mean, we we did the interview and, you know, Boosie wasn't too happy about it. He started calling you the cable guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's your name on the internet now, the cable guy. That's not my name on the internet. My name on the internet is the real TQ. I mean, but, well, that... <laughs> but uh, I, didn't, I didn't think it was funny. I that But that's also a testament to... Boosie don't even know who his fan base is. See, that's the thing. I could be credited to helping build the, the badass community. Okay? Me and people that I put in place, like, we've done a great job of building that badass community, that badass fan base. It's been strategic since I realized what was going on. 
prior to him going to jail and afterwards, okay? But for Boosie to try to play on me for having a nine to five while he was going in jail, bro, your whole fan base probably makes less than 29000 a year. You don't even know your fan base, bro. You, you shitting on your fan base. You know how many nine to five niggas jam you all day? Like, bro, you shitting on your fan base. You shitting on your brother. And it just really show you, like, it really just shows you that, like, dog, you supposed to be the people's champ. Boost is supposed to be the underdog. Boost is supposed to speak for the streets. Boost is supposed to speak for the for the non-Hollywood type niggas. And he shitting on his brother for and claiming that I work like the way he put it in context, it was like, how did I have money to put behind? And and it just and let, let me just talk about that. One, I worked in sales. I worked in sales while Boosie was gone. When I lived in New Orleans, I moved when we when Boosie got locked up, I left BR. She was too hot in BR, moved to New Orleans, worked until he came home. All right. I left the job a month after he came home. All right. However, back to the point of how did he have money? To put behind blue. Nigga. I was making 20% off of whatever you were making. How do you not know these things? How do you not like maybe Boosie mine is fucked up and maybe he just don't understand that like. Like he would make people believe that. I wasn't making a whole a shit ton of money. And a shit ton of money to me is 500,000, 400,000, right? So my whole thing is I don't know if Boosie is purposely lying or if he just got a bad mind. I don't know, but he is lying about quite a few things to make it to where I cannot respect it, even as my brother. I can forgive him, but in my eyes, I know that, bro, you, you're a celebrity that's using your status to lie on people that fuck with you, held you down, your family, people that know where all the fucking bones are buried. Like, and why would you play like that? Why would you straight up go and lie? Like the, the most the most up to date lie that upset me is now his narrative seems. And you tell me if you agree with this or not. The most recent narrative is. I took five million from him. Have you seen that? I signed it. Remember the uh, the the live. He's like, man, nigga signed a 10 million dollar contract, man. I'm supposed to get half of that. That's five million. Nigga TQ signed a $10 million contract. Like, and I'm just like, like, bro, man, bro, you get like this what, is, what is this? Is this the new deal that Blue signed that he's talking about or what? No, it's not a new deal that he signed. Remember, Boosie was initially signed, suing us for $10 million. Right. I do not know where that number came from. However, Boosie is his is going he went on live saying that i signed a 10 million dollar contract and he was supposed to get half he's saying that he's saying that i signed it mm. okay not only do i not know about a 10 million dollar contract but i only i did i didn't i only restructured blues contract with us the same contract that i did initially Right. But what I'm saying is it's so fucking dangerous how Boosie is just lying. Like, like my artist, my artist went up to Boosie on yesterday at the Bayou Classic and asked for a picture. Boosie respectfully, one of Boosie little uh minions walk up to him, hey, that's TQ artist. Um 
So Boosie tells uh, Subtweet Sean is the artist, right? So Boosie, and he just posted this. So check out Subtweet One, uh, Subtweet Sean One. That's he posted the video of Boosie doing this, right? So uh, as he Boosie's about to take the picture, one of Boosie's minions say, "Hey, that's TQ artist or whatever." Like just like a little gargoyle or something. Like you know how they in <laughs> cartoons they'll have the little, you know what I'm saying, the little henchman. That's TQ artist. I was like, so Boosie, Boosie uh, respectfully declined. Like he was like, nah. And it's like backstage, right? Wow. At the fan fest, at the Bayou Classic fan fest. So Boosie like, nah, I can't even do it, bro. You got to respect it. Uh, uh, nigga took five million from me. He told him that? <laughs> he said this in front of, in front of, other DJs, other promoters, other entertainers. You feel what I'm saying? And they all fuck with me. They all know me. But it's just the fact you can't, bro. Th bro, that's that's defamation. That's defamation, bro. You could be affecting my money. Like you can't just tell a lie, Nick. When you say when someone with his influence says I took five million from him. You have to be able to prove that. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm saying. It's like, bro, you need to stop this shit. You need to stop this shit. I don't want to be talking about this shit, but ain't nobody going to defend me. People will defend me in private. Right. But ain't nobody going to defend me. Nigga, you keep on. It gets worse. It becomes more and more as the weeks go on. And I'm chilling. And, and you know, so it's like, if he's if he's doing this, he's doing this everywhere. He's doing this everywhere. He's spreading in there. Now it's he took five million from me. Like, bro, that did not happen. Boosie is straight up lying. And he need to be held accountable just like all these niggas that get on the internet and think they can say whatever they want and just ruin people's reputation, do anything they want to to people without a voice and people without influence. Like this shit got to stop, bro. This shit is bad in in black music, black culture, hypocrisy. Like this shit whack, bro. This shit whack. So, I mean, I mean, so what are you trying to counter sue? Uh, man, I ain't trying to. I'm not. I'm I'm not. But um on the business side, I I I have had to move strategically um to avoid him just just making like false claims right like i like i've had i since since all this started i've gotten ahead of it like so it's a number of things i've done but i don't want to sue i don't want to sue nobody bro and defamation is is hard to prove but I don't I don't really want to be suing my brother. I think suing is whole shit. And I think it's dry snitching. Like, if if I had done something wrong, Boosie would be snitching. The only reason why I'm saying he's not snitching is because I haven't done nothing wrong. If I had done something wrong, the way Boosie playing this shit, like, and then the reason why, the reason why. It's hard to respect. And the reason why it's disappointing, Sean, is all of this is without having a conversation. Mm -hmm. If if it's my brother, if it's my 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 best friend, if it's if it's anybody. And I know we were working on something together. We were in business together before I sue anybody. I'm going to be like, bruh. I don't like how you did this. Like, what the fuck were you doing? I, we could have made more money. Yeah. I don't like... You know what I'm saying? I need this. I need this. I have... Bro, we haven't, we haven't had that conversation and without him going to the court, putting, putting these people in our business, which is clearly... Um, you know, we, we have a lot of opportunity to improve our business practices. Put it like that on both sides. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about as individuals with him and I. 
The way we was doing family business, there was a lot of room for improvement. Put it like that. But all of this going to court and suing people without having a conversation, I don't agree with that. And any business, man, if you're a business person, you're supposed to know. It's better to settle out of court. You yeah. Going to court and suing people should be the last thing. That should be the last thing. And Boosie, if you're a street, street nigga is supposed to know a lawyer going to take your money regardless. They gonna all if you go to any lawyer, they're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, you got a case, yeah, yeah. Uh, I need a um, fifty thousand dollar retainer, and man, them fucking lawyers gonna take your money all fucking day, bro. So I'm, I just don't get it, man. I just don't understand. So what's this about? Uh, he said in a in a recent Vlad interview that Blue is leaving Empire. Man, I do believe Blue is is um is leaving Empire, but I will say this. Blue and Empire, Blue and Empire's business relationship, I have no dealings with. I do not know. I did not negotiate any deal with Empire. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't my business. My business was on the badass side. Okay? My business, I, I restructured our agreement with, with Blue so that he could spread his wings. And this was in agreeance. We were, Boosie, Blue, and myself were in agreeance on this. Boosie, you don't want to put up no money. All right, once he gets dropped, we need to make his, uh, his contract non-exclusive so he can find an investor, either private or another label partner, and we will take a piece of the profits. We will take half of the profits. That was a good deal. That was a good deal. So there's still money to be made from that deal. But Boosie has certainly jeopardized that by the actions he's taken. So. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he, he calls him a double head snake for leaving him in Empire. Man, an artist going to do what's best for him. Like, is Boosie a double-headed snake for leaving Trill? Is Boosie a double-headed snake for leaving Atlantic? Trill is responsible for all of your hits. How many songs are you performing that are not Trill produced? It's not wrong. It's just an artist... And, and this is the mind frame that this is why I say never sign to a rapper because um, you're not nobody I sign, I think I'm going to sign them forever. Hopefully we have a long working relationship, but dog, you sign an artist and it works out, he's eventually going to move on and do his own, own thing. So is you not that art, that doesn't mean the artist is a snake at all, but um so that's you gotta watch that man. So that's why you gotta watch when a, when a when a, a artist is posting his artist, this my artist, my artist, my art. You gotta be careful and know the just like the the energy in that language because like this ain't no slave trade, like dog it's business. So um. So I don't think um, I don't think Blue is a snake. Um, you know, we all have our, our faults, um, especially in business. I don't know if I spoke about this last time we uh, had a chance to sit down, but the music business, all of these artists, the moment they start trying to sell their music and make money primarily from their music, they become a business. However, most of these artists do not come from families that have successful businesses. You know, they are not they are not ready to run a multi-million dollar business. So you're gonna have you're gonna have problems. You're gonna have um problems in communication and you're gonna have problems from an operational standpoint. Like and a lot of that is because, like I said, it's an instant business. It's, it can become an instant multi-million dollar business if 
this little dude out of Dallas take off tomorrow and he has to pay a staff and he has to, you know, pay expenses and he has to send invoices and he has to pay taxes. So shit can go a lot. There's a lot of shit that can go wrong from a business standpoint. So um, I say that to say Boost is not perfect. Um, my biz, like none of our shit has been perfect. Blue shit ha has definitely not been perfect. Um, but a lot of the reasons it stay like that is because rappers like Boosie keep fucking capping about what the business is. Hmm. That's keeping everybody in fucked up situations because people have fucked up expectations. People think that uh, just because you co-sign somebody, you uh, nigga can go. You can go in their pocket whenever you want and fuck what the contract says, and that's just not it. There's a trade-off for, you know, these hot action words like masters and, you know, rights and stuff like that. And, you know, it's not all, it's not an exact science. So you don't have any influence on him leaving Empire? You don't have any say-so or where you want him to go next or anything? Uh, no, I don't. And I'm going to be honest with you. I just say no, I don't. But, I mean, because I, but we're I, not even Blue and I, this shit has put a strain on our relationship too. Me and Blue are cool. Me and Blue plan to get money together. Me and Blue are are respectful of each other's ear for music from the creative standpoint and especially from the discovery of new artists. We we have a genuine respect for each other on those levels, right? But this shit has become it became a point where it was just too fucking much to where Blue, like when Blue kicked off his tour and stuff like that, Blue was like, man, <clears throat> it's just too much going on and that's still your brother and I ain't fucking with nothing on that side right now. And I, I respect that totally. Like who's going to explain to every city we go to, man, what's, you know, TQ here, like what's it, you know? Like, man, I get all of this. That's the thing. I I understand all of this, bro. And that's what to me, that's what real is. Real is understanding is understanding that it's business. It's business. Um, sometimes it can be personal, but more days out of the week than 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 none is is business. See, because when I hear Boosie speak. It seems like the way he puts it is you and Blue are like business partners. So it's hard to believe that you don't know where he's going to go next. I mean, we've, we've discussed it, but I'm not negotiating any of that. I did not negotiate whatever deal Boosie is talking about. I didn't have anything to do with it because I make money on the badass side. I set this up to where me and Boosie make money together and i set it up to where he boosie can't make no money without me and i can't make no money without him so when boosie wants to flip the table over it's like bro we discussed this we discussed what the plan was you i actually found the text messages too okay boy here it is where i sent you everything that we agreed to and i texted you all right uh, the lawyer sent the uh, final uh, draft. Uh, I'm locking it in. This is what we get. Like, so I make money on the badass side. I make money on the badass side. All right. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to do that. Like, it's not going how it should have been going. We should be up. We should be up. We, me and my brother, should be up. We should have two more artists that have gone gold, at least gold, coming behind Blue. Boosie should have a project with Blue. Like, it don't make no sense at all other than Boosie wants to sabotage this thing, cut me out, and really wants to make it hard for Blue to succeed. Yeah. And now, Empire now, to succeed, to be honest with you. Yeah, now, Boosie did respond to you saying that 
because in our last interview, you said that Boosie doesn't like spending his own money. He didn't put up no money. But Boosie did say he did give Blue tens of thousands of dollars at times. No. Uh, and it, and then he was like, you know, them ten thousands they add up. Nah, over time. nah, that's not true. That's not true. I would like for him to provide some type of proof on that. Like, and it, tens of that's not true. That's just he he's not telling the truth. Sean, what is the job of the of the of the, uh, of the record label in exchange for the masters? What what is the record label supposed to pay for? Studio videos. At least, at least <laughs> studio marketing. Lucy has never paid for one session of blues. Five six projects, independent projects. He has never played. He's never paid for a session. He can't show one. I'm talking about a three hundred dollar session. He's never reimbursed. He's never reimbursed Blue. He's never paid a producer. Like it's certain shit. When you when you get your nuts up to, hey, I'm suing for millions, man. You're supposed to show where you took a loss, and that's why again, when Boosie comes out and says, "I'm stealing from him," dog, show where you took a loss. If you say you gave him tens of thousands, be more specific. What was it for? Because I may have missed it. Because I may have missed it. But you gave him tens of thousands? How many, how many tens of thousands? Was it 40? Was it 100? Was it 20? Be more specific because I don't, I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe it. Just like I... Because he... I'm learning that Boosie is lying about numbers. He's lying about money and it's, you know, he will do that. Now I know he'll do that. He also questioned why, like, why are you being credited for uh, the writing side of blues records? He claims you have no talent. Um, it was just a lot of personal jabs. I don't want to get was, into it. It was a lot that. of personal jabs, but, You can do what you want with your publishing, right or wrong. If you want, if you want, you could raffle off a piece of your publishing. And on the admin side, you can list it as whatever you, whatever you comfortable with. Right? So that's what that's what that is. That's on Blue's independent stuff, where Blue, Blue and I cut a deal, and that's on, on the independent stuff. So that's what it is. Some of the stuff needs to be updated from an admin standpoint, standpoint, but with everything going on, I haven't touched anything. I just ain't touching. I'm not touching nothing. So, but with your pub, man, you can do whatever you want. Like, and people do that. But my thing is, like, Boosie, you don't even... And I didn't like how he tried to frame it like he taking kids out of your mouth. Bro, that's pussy, first of all. Second, bro, you do, you, Boosie does features with anybody that will pull up to the club after the club and do it. He literally posts doing features in New Mexico, uh, such and such, such and such, hit the line. He literally does this. Of those people he do a feature with after every show, Boosie, you're not collecting your publishing off that. You're not collecting your publishing off that. Like, you ain't... Dude, you only care when it's... <laughs> also, are those people fucking over you? Are those people taking kid, uh, money out your kid's mouth? Like, I don't like how you frame that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Boosie, it's just not real, bro. It's not, I don't like it. I'm tired of it. This shit is draining. And it's just like, like, bro. Even with the, like, the ride wave stuff. 
I, I, that was that was what I was going to actually. I'm ask. just I, like, bro. All right, what's your what's your take on it? I mean, I feel him on that. Like, damn. I mean, a lot of people do it. Lil Wayne did it. Jay Z did it. A uh, lot of people. Jay Z, you know, he uh, copied a lot of Big's lyrics. A lot of people uh, do. Yeah, Including Wayne him. did it. Um. But shit, those records that that Rod Wave were copying, does he own them songs? Who? Boosie. Boosie doesn't own any of the stuff from Trill, but he has a he has rights, and that's another thing. This is this is a this is where people can learn, right? Because I see a lot of people saying he probably don't even own those songs. It doesn't matter if he owns the songs because he's still a rights holder. Arguably, Rod Wave is infringing on his rights. So Boosie has every right to make a claim that Rod Wave is infringing on his rights. Okay? However, Boosie goes on social media and says, I'm getting ready to sue Rod Wave and a whole lot of people. (laughs) YG and... (laughs) And this is what I'm saying, okay? Before doing that, why not just call and just say, uh, hey, Rod, I heard the song. You know, I fuck with it or I don't fuck with it. Hey, this is what I need. All right? I need about 20, 25K um, up front and um, maybe like three points off the song. And... I need to be properly credited. And, um, you know, can y'all have that by Friday? Or can you shoot that to me? Go, go ahead and zell that to me. You got zell? Shoot me the 20, 25K right now. And then have your lawyer, or I have my lawyer draw up the paperwork. Because you're talking about using lawyers anyway. All right? But instead of I'm suing y'all, YG. Man, bro, somebody just brought that to my attention. You use my fuck the police in, in your song, fuck the police. Um, this is what I need. Um, I don't want to go to court. I need 30 bands because, you know, song been out. I see it got X amount of views or whatever. Man, I need y'all to shoot me like 30K. Um, credit me on a song, maybe like three points off the record. And, um, yeah. How soon you think you can get that to me? That's the way to do it. I have my lawyer. So you're paying a lawyer 5K versus if you're going to sue, it's going to take a long time. So you're going to end up spending at least 50, 60K. It's just like, man, it's how you do shit. And, and at the same time, he he's done the same thing. Yeah. So it's like... I'm suing you is not, that's not raw. That's not, I don't want that to be boosted. I don't want that to be boosted. Not without a phone call. And when I saw the shit, I said, that's the same thing he did. He ain't calling, trying, Boosie ain't calling, trying to get us on three way to, to cuss us out or to say, man, y'all did. I felt like we could have got more money. I need more money. I need this. Instead of 50% of what blew the profits on Blue's three albums, I need 60, 70. You feel me? He didn't do that. He didn't. He just went to suing. He just went to, I'm going to sue y'all, block. Unblock. Oh, yeah, I'm going to sue y'all niggas, block back. Like, what the fuck? Bro, I'm telling you, you the same. It's it's the it's it's a pattern. It's not a. I just don't think it's real nigga shit. I don't think. You feel what I'm saying? Like, bro, call me. Like, and I know what people saying. Yeah, Rod Wave could have called, but they don't do that. That ain't what they do. That ain't what they do. Boost ain't calling nobody to clear nothing. He's not. You know, and. You know how it is, bro. The artists, they are paying homage. Because if you know, you know. 
right? If you know that's old, or oh, that's Boosie, or oh, that's Ed Sharon, or you, you know, but that's kind of like the fun part of discovery of music, like knowing the sample and like, so Rod Wave could have called him, but if it's a thing, it's a thing. All right. Rod Wave probably ain't think he's going to call now. You know what I'm saying? But that's just how it be. You know what I'm saying? So I look, I'm like, Boosie, you have a whole project mixtape on streaming, streaming platforms called Should Have Been My Beats. And that's an old mixtape, right? But it got everybody beats on that. And it's just like, dog, you ain't crediting none of them. So are you taking money out of their kid's mouth? Like, you can't. Don't do that, bro. Don't frame it like that. Don't victimize yourself. Like, you a big dog. You don't, you're not a victim, Boosie. So I don't like that. And another thing, like, because, I, you know, bro, I'm, I really, I'm, I'm really a fan of the music of the of the culture of down south music of the trill like like i'm damn near a historian on our era all right and so i'm having this conversation with with some of my um my peers like like in new orleans and i'm like bro because they're asking me what about the raw wave shit and the YG shit, what I think about it, I'm just like, yo, one of Boosie's biggest songs are underground songs, let's put it like that, is They Dyking, right? They Dyking, all right? They Dyking uses the beat off Jeezy's album produced by Kali Park, all right? Boosie put, has been performing that song. That's one of his top songs to perform at um, when he when he performs live. But technically, Boosie is supposed to pay performance rights, performance royalties to Kali Park every time he performs that bitch in a venue, in a uh, state, in a uh, arena. The, he's supposed to make make the. Uh, the pros aware that he performed it by, by submitting his set list to make sure Kali Park get paid every time he performs that song. But that's not happening. That's not happening. You know, that's one of your biggest songs. You ain't never made it right with Kali Park to say, Hey, you know, I've been, you know, this is one of my biggest songs, like probably top 10, arguably, right? You ain't never hit up Kali Park and just say, Hey, Kali Park, you know, man, I've been eating off this song. Like, let me make sure you getting your credit slash your, you know, your percentage or whatever. He hasn't done that. So what I'm saying is like, ain't nobody a victim here. And there's always a better way to do business, especially with dealing with what we do business on. So it's just like, man, don't frame it like, man, yeah, man, I got to sue these. You don't have to sue nobody, bro. A lot of this shit is just a conversation and some administrative shit. You are independent. Most of the people that you that we talking about are independent now, you know what I'm saying? Or and if they not, they got the budget to make it right. You know? A lot of people ran with the the narrative that uh ah oh, Boosie's going broke. He's going broke. He mad. He he trying to come after everybody. He need the money. He's going through court I don't trial. Know. I know he I mean he has a lot he has a lot of that he's facing with that federal case, but I again I don't know what his money is like. But this is like, why can't you stand on business and just want for what's right? Why why you got to be broke when you speaking out about how you feel? I don't know. I think the internet. I've learned a lot about the internet, man, since two thousand seventeen. Um, I think people are just like. I think people are getting a little tired of Boosie doing the stuff. It's technically is on a business end, but it seems like a lot of stuff he's doing as it relates to business is a lot. A lot of it is personal. Like even the stuff with Raw Wave just seems like it's personal towards uh, other artists. Um, and I think 
that Boosie has, um, he may have trouble kind of like when it comes to the music business specifically, communicating from boss to boss. You feel me? Because, because Rod Wave is out of here. Rod Wave is Rod, Rod Wave is a boss, right? I mean, I don't see him having them conversations with as many bosses as he could be, even when there's an issue. I don't know why he like he choose to either make it something that ain't or he he's he's going in a direction of like like I say trying to sue people I, but I think it may be like I don't know it's it's some personal shit when it comes to going from boss to boss um but I don't know man so in New Orleans I guess Boosie was looking for you and he chased you with a bat. Man, was that, that, was that, that a is story? true. <laughs> that is true, bro. But he didn't chase me with a bat, bro. He got out with a bat. But I, t I, I went on when I was on a uh, Adam 22 and Wax show. I talked about it, man. Like, again, this is so pussy. Like, this is the thing, bro. Sean. I don't need a bat for you. I don't need a bat for you. I don't. Why does he need a bat for me? That's mm. th these are the questions y'all need to be asked. Why he need a bat for me? You a gangster? Why you need a bat for uh? What I what what they what they, how 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 they look at at uh people like me and you? We civilians. What? Mm -hmm. yeah, what how they civilians. look at us? We civilians and uh. Uh, why you need why you need a bat for the cable guy? Why? But that wasn't it. So I'm walking across the street. I'm walking across Poydras, which is a three lane street right in front of the Superdome. I'm parked right in front of the Superdome, right? Well, across the street, I'm crossing the street. He's in a three lane. What you call him? Like a few cars back. I see him jump out with two other niggas. From high school, I'm already crossing traffic, right? So, when I'm supposed to rush Boosie in the middle of oncoming traffic while he got a bat and two niggas, like... Wait, this was, was this over money? <sighs> he said it was. My thing is, I ain't even know he was... I ain't even know what... <sighs> Bruh. When I tell you this shit is, this shit is stranger than fiction, bro. So it's funny. I know, it's the internet, bro. I know there's no way that that's not going to be funny. Okay. However, I'm going to say that's whole shit. Why you need a bat for you? Why you need a bat for a, a civilian, boost? Like not where? Even, not what, even that, nigga, man. Where are, are the gangsters? Where are not, the gangsters? Not even that. Y'all are family, man. Exactly. Are if family. I man, if I want to, if me and my, if me and one of my tightest homeboys, for some reason, nigga, we got into it. I'm not thinking about riding around with a bat and other niggas for him. Oh, anybody? Let me tell you something. If me and somebody get get into it in a club, right? Let's just say the club, and. We uh, and I'd be like, man, bro, if I see these niggas out, outside, like, we're gonna tear it down. I'm still not thinking about my son's bat. I'm my son's bat is in the car. My son played travel baseball, Harlem Hatch, right? I'm still not thinking about grabbing my bat. What the fuck, bro? Like, that is lame, bro. That's lame. It's lame. All this stuff I'm supposed to be, right? All this stuff I'm supposed to be. Why are you riding around with a bat? Why or why you why you ain't by yourself? That's the other thing. 
Oh, he ain't jump out by himself. Ask him that. And then now, the other thing is, on top of that, bro, Boosie did not run and make Blue give him 30000 bro. I verified that with Blue just to make sure. I'm like, bro, are you? I'm like, bro, that didn't happen, did it? Man, Blue was like, no, man. I was like, bro, I know it didn't happen, but this man is saying that. Hmm. I'm telling you, man. When Boosie recently, recently went to jail, Vlad says that Blue hit him up about $50,000. Who? Vlad Blue says hit, Blue hit him up about $50,000? When, when, when Boosie was in jail. Man, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to get into their relationship. All I know is Blue hit him up about $50,000. Blue hit up Vlad and was like, "Yo, we need a hundred thousand to get Boosie out of uh to get to get him bonded out of jail." Okay, this is the extent of my knowledge. I know Boosie had his girl, and my mama hit up Blue for money. So if that happened, Blue was probably like, "Man, why y'all calling me? This nigga is suing me." And she called Vlad. I'm about to call Vlad. Y'all don't have Vlad number. I'm going to call Vlad because when I talked to Blue, Blue was like, hey, man, you know, they just hit me up for money asking, can I, you know, and he's like, man, not only do I, I don't have that to, you know, I'm building, I'm doing this Moon Boy University, shout out to Moon Boy University, um, I'm doing this Moon Boy University and I got a bunch of money tied up. Not only do I don't have it like that right now, but this nigga is suing me and trying to ruin my life and ruin my career. Like, like what don't they understand? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to tell your mom no or whatever, but so if that happened, that was probably Blue trying to make some shape. Mm, okay, that, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, shit. Boosie said that he he pray uh, he asked God to punish Blue for stealing, and then that's when Blue got uh, locked up for his situation. Uh, when he said that, now Sean, you gotta be you making that up. You got no, y'all gotta a, y'all gotta show me that clip. He ain't say that. He said it on Vlad two weeks ago. He said I asked God to punish Young Blue for stealing. Then he get caught cheating on his wife. And then you know the whole. I forgot all about that. I that guess was, he went that to was I, I, that, uh, that was that was a traumatizing time, bro. I forgot all about that. Boosie said that, bro. I don't know, man. I wouldn't say nothing like that. I don't know. Boosie need to leave God out of this, and he need he need to he need to stop saying stuff like that, bro. He playing with all the wrong stuff, bro. Yo, look, did, uh, did, did cha <laughs> to, to change topics, though. Yeah, yeah, the, let's change topics, man. What, man, hopefully me, and, hopefully me and Boosie uh, just can be on some brotherly love one day, man. We don't got to do business together again. I do miss my brother at times. I'm not trying to work with him at all. He needs to stop the foolishness. Um, on As it relates to Blue, Boosie cannot get paid without me. I cannot get paid without him. Um, at least a, a substantial amount, right? He can't get paid a substantial amount without me. And because I'm not going, like, bro, there, you cannot deny, like, you're not suing no other artists for money. You're not, you, there is no other d money dispute or money that has been made that I was not involved in. You cannot show proof that you can do this when, as it, as it relates to an artist, becoming big and making money you cannot you cannot show that you can do it without me so my stance on this is as it relates to what badass makes from from the blue situation there, there is no situation where i don't eat as well okay but other than that um i do hope to resolve all of this 
Um, everybody got their ways. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, Boosie has his ways. And that's all right, man. That's all right. But again, like, like we are adults. We're adults. We have kids. Okay? And uh, everything that he's doing, the reason why I'm speaking out about it is because he won't let it go and do it the right way. Any money that's owed to you, like, is owed to me from Blue. Okay? So we can settle this together. Okay? But outside of that, man, just, it ain't nothing but some fucking money. Boosie makes money every fucking weekend, okay? Like, it's, it ain't nothing but some money, it, and, you, and you cannot produce one receipt where you lost money. So stop saying Blue stole from you. Stop saying I stole from you. Stealing is when you say, man, I lost X amount of dollars on this person. That's when you got to claim, like, Man, I lost money. You know how many investors, you know how many people that start labels lose money every day on artists? Stop saying somebody stole from you. You missed out on an opportunity, okay? We missed out on an opportunity together because you're the influence. Boosie is the influence. I needed Boosie to bring it on home, okay? Still do. I still need him to to do certain things in order to bring in what is old, okay? But you missed out on an opportunity. There, you didn't lose no money. Nobody stole anything from you. Stop using those terms. They stole money from me. They stole money from me. Pay me. Like, bro, I don't have no money to pay you. I don't have no money to pay you. I did not make any money off of Blue's New Deals. Zero. So anything that's old, to to the to the label, stop stop saying pay me, pay me, pay your brother, pay pay Boosie. Fuck y'all. Hmm. Fuck y'all. You know? But yeah, so that's that. But man, I ain't even tripping, bro. Everybody, like we got so many people that we that we genuinely care about, don't want nothing bad to happen to, that we could just say, he got some fucked up ways, but you know, that's my people. But he got some fucked up ways. I think that's what I hope to have with Boosie one day. That's your uncle. He got some fucked up ways. He got some shit with him. But that is your uncle. Right? That is what I hope to have uh, with Boosie. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's ever possible, to be honest with you. Because I have learned that shit is super deep with him. Right. So. Uh, recently, we seen Boosie and Webby in the club together. We haven't seen them a while, together in a while. Uh, you know, a lot of fans, we never really understood like what happened between them. I mean, we're talking about one of the, the hottest duos in the mid 2000s. What happened? Um, My perspective on this is uh, like, Webby is a super loyal person, like extremely loyal, okay? So I think when uh, Boosie was trying to leave Trill, that did cause a rift. Um, but um, I don't know. As a fan of of uh, Boosie and Webby, um, I, I do hope for gangster music too. But I don't know. I don't know, man. I saw that video. I don't feel like Webby believed that it's gonna happen either. Cause Webby was like. Webby was like, and I know them, right? Webby was like, Boosie was like, uh, let me, uh, we got, we name a date, pick a date, pick a date. And Webby was like, tonight, nigga. That was Webby's, that was Webby's uh, vibe. And that vibe was, man, you just talking. Right? Boosie had a drink in his hand. Webby vibe was like tonight, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, because it don't make no sense why they ain't drop another two other than it was all on Boosie. It was all on Boosie, man. So, uh, hopefully they do, uh, hopefully they do 
drop a project, man. Or maybe not. Maybe leave that shit where it's at, to be honest hmm. with you. Cause I ain't really been uh I haven't really I ain't haven't really been fucking with the new the new stuff Boosie been putting out. So Yeah. When Boosie went to jail, you were taking care of him, like making sure everything was good? I was taking care of stuff on the um just like from a manager standpoint. Just like uh just maintaining Maintaining any business that got messed up. You know, when artists go in, a lot of deposits held up. So staying in touch with promoters, um, communicating, uh, letting updating Trill and updating, um, you know, people that, that we had business or potential business with, um, as well as maintaining the, the free boosty like movement. Um, that fan base, all the pages, you know, that's pretty much, I, I pretty much, as far as what I did while he was gone, it was just more so of a manager role. Um, Boosie was super limited. I don't know if, if y'all remember, the whole time he was in there, he literally could not talk to the public. Like, he couldn't, like, there's no recorded uh, phone conversations that made it to the net or nothing like that. Facts. Like he couldn't do, he couldn't do shit. So it was, his communication was pretty much cut off. Um, even on the three way shit, like they, they nipped that in the bud a few times, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I don't know, for, you know, I, I would go see him probably like every month and, um, and just, uh, but as far as like, what I say I did that was a difference maker was like help that free Boosie movement. Um, and I was just one of the people, but definitely working that fan base. I feel like that did play a part in it. Like how did that affect everybody? Him going to jail, he's the breadwinner at the time. Um, you know, your mom, the homies, yourself, like, um, like how, how did did everybody's life just change? I mean, all right. So when Boosie went to jail, he wasn't supposed to be in there that long, right? He was supposed to be in there like a year, I think. Um. So life ain't really changed till he got um till they put the the murder charges on. So. But uh, I can only speak for myself, right? I've always had more than enough for myself. I've always had business. I've always worked. I've always had business and I've always been an entrepreneur, right? I've always had everything, like, like Jesus said, I came in the game with everything I want. I always had my, my support system. Always had my friends. Always had. I ain't. I ain't never been broke. Okay. So, and I've always saw shit coming. I've always saw shit coming. Always. So, um. So to answer your question. For about the first year, ain't really nothing changed, right? But when he got indicted, it was like a scramble. It was a scramble to to beat the shit, right? And um, so yeah, I mean, it, it it definitely he was in there longer than he was supposed to. And um, but I I wouldn't say, I mean, I guess shit did change because I did move to New Orleans, um, went back in corporate America. And uh, yeah, I mean, shit changed just because I met I met new people that did not know me from what I did professionally by managing Boosie. Right. So I guess, and then once he came home, that was like, kind of like a shakeup. To uh, it was like, oh, he really uh. Cause you talking about five years, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
So it's like, oh, yeah, oh, so he really uh, does do that. Okay. So I don't know, man. I mean, when he gets out, I mean, did you even expect for him to get out? Because it looked ugly at one point. Um, I mean, absolutely. Like, I believed that I believed that he would get out. Yep. I definitely never thought that he would uh, he would get convicted. Yeah. Me personally. Thankful and for it, that. Thankful it worked out. Man. Right. And and then he gets out. And then I mean, how crazy is his shows? Like, how crazy was he booked when he when he first got out? Um, Booster was always booked up, but his price was just up. Um, so his price I think he was like 20K before he went in, maybe 15 to 20K. And then he was like 75 to 100K plus. And um, so, yeah, I think it was, uh, but I think it was, it was supposed to be like that. It was supposed to be like that, man. Boosie, at that time, his body of work was, man, Boosie, his body of work was worth every penny that he was getting. Um, at that time when he got home, we renegotiated, re renegotiated his deal with Trill. So that's how he stayed with Trill, with Trill in Atlanta, right? Um, so we did that deal within a month after he came home. So he got, got back on his feet like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the love was, was definitely deserved, man. Definitely deserved. Like that was, he overcame he overcame some shit, man. But like I say, we love him for these things, right? But all that shit is also self-inflicted. Boosie is not the victim in none of that shit. It's all self-inflicted. So you start, here we are years and years later, we got to put that into perspective with, and I'm now I'm speaking as a fan, and I'm speaking as a fan of the culture. And I'm, and I'm comparing Boosie to all of our icons in the music. We have to put into perspective that a lot of our greats fucking crash out, no matter how much we love them, how much they, you know, they made an impression on an era in our life or whatever. But they be doing fucked up shit. We are, we, and, and, you know what I'm saying? Like, even with the Diddy stuff, right? You got all this stuff coming out about Diddy, but it's not the first time it's coming out, right? But it's like, I still salute Diddy. It's going to be hard for me to, to be like, man, fuck Diddy. Because I'm such a student of what he's done in the music business, which is what I've always strived for, to be successful, a, a successful music mogul. So it's going to be hard for me to just totally say, man, Diddy does, did, and is doing fucked up shit to people. Right. I kind of like don't want to click on it. Right. And I know that that's the same sentiment that most people have for Boosie. Right. So I know anytime that. Um, but I would say this, like. All of they should be self-inflicted, though. All they should be self-inflicted. They don't have that to do. A lot of the shit. And that's the problem that I have with my brother is a lot of stuff he's, he's doing, he does not have to do that. He don't have to do that. There's another way. There's a, there's a better way where you don't have to shit on people to make money. You definitely don't have to shit on your family to make money. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I think uh, as a fan... You know, a lot of a lot of what our favorite icons do is self-inflicted, man. And we love some of them. We love it for, you know, what I'm saying like I always say my biggest 
One of my one of my favorite artists is DMX. But DMX OD, bruh. DMX OD'd and he probably almost OD'd four other times that we heard about and probably six other times that we ain't hear about. Yeah. So in the case of Boosie, like I'm, you know, like I saw somebody posted, you know, Boosie's cancer free after what you call. But Boosie ain't get cancer naturally. Boosie got cancer from smoking Bojo and that K2, whatever that shit is, in jail, right? And after he got out of jail, that shit, that is why he got cancer. He ain't just had no bad luck. Like some people. So while we are like, oh man, this nigga done overcame so much. Years later, and if we zoom out, how much of it is self-inflicted? I talk about him having diabetes. I don't have no fucking diabetes. My grandfather and my grandmother just passed last year, 90 some years old. They never had diabetes. Boosie got diabetes from drink, drinking syrup so much. That's self-inflicted. I gotta take a shot. I need insulin. Can somebody get insulin? That is self-inflicted, bruh. So, Growth and personal growth and maturity in this business is saying, man, we got to start being real about the business, the lifestyle, what it is and what it ain't. Nobody is perfect, but man, we have to be honest about the shit that we overlook from our, the people who we love their music. You know what I'm saying? It's some it's some dark shit. Like people fucked up. But so don't play victim. Don't play victim. Don't play victim, bro. That's that's my thing. Hey man, I appreciate this interview. Another classic as expected. Uh you give away a lot of free game. Um when is your book coming out? Uh we're looking at March, March 16th. Okay. March 16th. Is this a, a tell-all book or is it just No, nah, like it's not a tell-all book. I would never do a tell-all book. I would do, it's more of a, um, it's more of a um, educational book with, and using my, my real life experience. So, and other people's too, other people's experience who have, uh, I'm talking to other managers as well as uh, uh, label owners and mm -hmm. artists. So that's all. But um, never signed to a rapper. Never signed to rapper.com. Go uh, that's hard. go to that uh, website and make sure you sign up so you can get the first um, get updates as we drop it. What you got coming up, man? Man, shit. I'm in real estate. I got I got a few artists. Uh, shit. Interviews, new pot, new podcast, new podcast coming, a new show coming. Yeah. Um. Yep. Uh, man, you shit, gotta get man. me on that, bro. I don't want. I, I do not that. wanna. Sean, I don't wanna talk about Boosie. If I hear signed, the word signed, you know what? I ain't signing nothing else ever again. You not signing another artist again? I'm not signing nothing personally. Oh. I don't even. <laughs> Like, bro, I don't even want to hear the word sign for quite some time, bro. I'm just tired, bro. I just want to talk. I just want. See, my thing is, it all start with the music for me. It, it all start with the music. It all start with the music. Like, I just, I just want to be a part of making great music and helping artists monetize their talent. That's that's it. And when I look back on it, I want to be say, hey, that era, that was our era. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, because you you can never choose how long they're gonna love you. That's one thing about our culture. You right. Can, let me let me ask you this before we get out of here. Have you found an artist that is as talented as Young Blue since? Yes. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, I have. My artist Nobi is as talent. He's he's more R and B. He's truly R and B, but he's as talented as Young Blue. Um, when I first I tried to sign Rob Four Nine too. Um, I tried to sign Rob Four Nine. Rob Four Nine. He has he had the voice that I the same thing I heard in Blue. I was like. Because I'm I'm big on like vocal tone, right? Because you can't make that. Um, so when, once I heard, as soon as I heard Rob Four Nine, I was like, I was like, yeah, this gonna go. As long as he, as long as he, rapping in this energy, right, it's gonna go. So I tried to sign him, man. 